We have been expounding the Gospel of John, and up through chapter 7, we have seen how John's account of Jesus Christ includes hot, and I mean sizzling, confrontations between Jesus and the religious leaders of his day. The preacher from Nazareth upset their business in the temple in John chapter 2, and the Jewish leaders demanded a sign to verify what sort of authority Jesus would exercise and be allowed to exercise in their temple. He healed a man on the Sabbath and claimed that he was working and his father was working, making himself equal with God. And Jesus was, uh, the, the Jews decided, intended to kill Jesus because of his words as well as his works. He stirred up controversy among the people. The uh, Jewish leaders said that anyone who speaks openly of Jesus would be in trouble with them. And so the people uh, spoke quietly and, and uh, debated among themselves who this man Jesus was. Some saying he was a prophet, some saying that he was the Christ, and so forth. And on it went. And the, the, the people wanted to, to find out who this Jesus was, and he was stirring up all kinds of trouble and controversy. Nicodemus, one of their own, risked ostracism and had an audience with Jesus at night. Later, he was shut down when he spoke in Jesus' defense. These themes swell to greater heights in the 8th chapter of the 4th Gospel as Jesus readily exposed their intent to kill him and predicted their final attempt to shut him down by nailing him to the cross. Amid this stunning chronicle, Jesus' words add further credence to the finding of the Jewish officers sent out earlier to arrest him. You remember in John chapter 7 and verse 46 how they failed in their mission, saying, No man ever spoke like this man, Jesus Christ. My name is Michael Chandler, and I'm pastor of the Victor Valley Bible Church in Victorville, California, and I'd like to welcome you to this Bible on our day broadcast on the subject of No Man ever spoke like this man. And if you have your Bible or a New Testament, I invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of John as I read chapter 8, actually beginning in chapter 7 and verse 53. Everyone went to his own house. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teach her, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you. Let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? Jesus said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I come from and where I am going. I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, I judge no one. And yet if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, 
and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself? Because he says, Where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do not, and uh, you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come to myself. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. And he was a murderer from the beginning. It does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear it, because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory, there is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you are that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets, and you say, If anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Why do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him, and I, if I say, I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. No man ever spoke like this man. No less than five bold claims from the lips of Jesus call each of us to consider this man's claim on our own lives. His enemies were incensed by his words, but at least... They understood their meaning and implications. You and I must also decide to either reject Jesus or confess him as Lord God and Savior. For we would vainly wish for him to merely go away and leave us alone. 
First consider that Jesus claimed exclusive power to dispel darkness. You know, ours is a dark world where moral boundaries are no more secure than our national borders, confusing and subject to ever-shifting policies. Truly, the Bible presents man in his natural state as living in darkness. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, for example, describes the Christian before conversion, saying in Ephesians 5 and verse 8, You once were darkness, so full of darkness as to be utterly without light. So they, he could say they not only lived in darkness, they were darkness before Christ converted them to himself. The works of darkness, he says in Ephesians 5.11, should be exposed because they are unfruitful and inherently shameful. The devil and his demons, he says in Ephesians 6.12, are rulers of the darkness of this age. The Bible elsewhere says that the whole world lies in the power of the wicked one, the prince of darkness. But Jesus said in John 8 and verse 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. This claim, unique claim, made only by this man who spoke like no other man, are the words of Jesus Christ. He and he alone claimed exclusive power to dispel darkness. Now, second, Jesus claimed that the Father testified to the truthfulness of his words. The Father sent me, he says, in John 8 and verse 16. Uh, and yet, if I do not judge, uh, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, for I am with the Father who sent me. Verse 18, I am the one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. John 8, 26, I have many things to say and no judge and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. Verse 29, and he who sent me is with me. Jesus Christ was sent from heaven by God the Father, according to his own word. He says, beginning in verse 42, that he proceeded from God, that he came from God, that he was sent by God, and God was his Father. Listen, John 8, 42. If God were your Father, he said to his enemies, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand to the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear, because you are not of God. And then in verse 49, uh, do we not rightly say that you, have a, that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death I honor my Father, Jesus says. Once more, back in verse 16, again as we read, God the Father sent him and was with him, which reason, Jesus says, his words are true. God was Jesus' Father, and God sent Jesus from heaven, so he could say, I proceeded from God. I was sent by God. What an amazing statement. Again, very unique, very special, very true, that the Father testified to the truthfulness of Jesus' words. How do we know this? Jesus said, I came from God, who is true, and I speak what he told me to say. What an amazing statement. Now third, in connection to his words, this man who spoke like no other man claimed that if a person believes his word, 
the same will be free from the power and penalty of sin. In John 8, 31 and 32, he said, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, the Jews didn't get, in this case, the meaning of Jesus' words. Ignorant of their own history, (laughs) they said, uh, We have never been enslaved to anyone. We have never been in bondage to anyone. Of course, the Jewish nation had been in bondage throughout its history. 400 years of enslavement in the land of Egypt and throughout the book of Judges, in and out of bondage and enslavement and uh, uh, taxation by the likes of Midian and Moab and the Philistines. For uh, a whole generation, they were held captive by Babylon later Persia, even now in this very moment, as they say these words, they were not an independent nation, for Rome controlled them. And a Roman curator, a Roman procurator, governor, Pilate, governed Jerusalem and Judea. So this is, this is utterly ridiculous for them to say we've never been in bondage to anyone, we're Abraham's descendants. Well, they forget that God actually told their their, uh, their father Abraham, that their descendants would be enslaved for 400 years in a land that was not their own. I don't understand what, what they mean by this. We have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you have made free? But Jesus, rather than going into a, a Bible history lesson with these guys who should have known more, he said, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And if I make someone free, They'll be free indeed. Free from what? Free from the power, the bondage, the enslavement of sin and from its penalty. Freedom, Jesus taught, you see, is more than just released from human captivity. It is being unshackled from the bondage of sin. Our innate bent to think, speak, and act in ways that dishonor and disobey God and ultimately condemn us to suffer his just wrath forever in hell. Forgiveness of sin and freedom from sin. A desire for godliness and a longing and a devotion to righteousness. This is Jesus' promise to all those, anyone who would follow him. If you continue in my word, if you believe and you take my word seriously, you will be free from sin. This is Jesus' promise. What an amazing statement. Has anyone ever, of all the religious or political, for that matter, leaders, financial uh, potentates of the history of the world, has anyone ever claimed, you continue in my word and you will be free from your natural bent to sin and disobey God? I can release you from that which would otherwise destroy you forever. No one has ever made such a claim as this. No man ever spoke like this man. Now, fourth, whereas Jesus and the Father are separate persons, Jesus claimed essential equality with God. In fact, he says here, it is written in your law, verse 17, that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. He is speaking of two persons, him and his Father. God the Father, and himself, two unique persons. But he says here, I am essentially equal with the Father. Throughout this gospel, Jesus often begins his sayings with the telling, I am. I am the light of the world. Uh, uh, he, he says later, uh, John chapter 11, I am the resurrection of the life. John 14, I am uh, the way, the truth, and the life, and so forth. I am, and he says in John eight fifty seven through 58, in response to his detractors saying that Jesus was too young to have known Abraham, he said, before Abraham was born, I am. In the very instance, they took up stones to kill Jesus for this saying because they immediately discerned that He was claiming to be equal with God, claiming to be the eternal God who spoke to Moses from the burning bush. You may recall in Exodus chapter 3, when 
Moses was being called by God to uh, to go to Egypt and deliver the people of God out of bondage. He asked them, he asked the, the God who was speaking from this burning bush, whom shall I say has sent me? And from the bush he heard the divine response, I am who I am. Say to them, I am has sent you. In other words, I am. I have no beginning. I have no end. I am self-existent. I am the eternal God. Before me there was no one, and I am. That's what God's name is. Yahweh. I am the eternal God. The God who has no beginning. The God who has no end. The God who was not born but who has always existed and created time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I am who I am. Now, Jesus is saying, before Abraham was born, I am. In fact, in um, we read earlier in this same chapter, John 8 and uh, verse 21, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. In John 8, 24, Therefore I said to you, you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. The pronoun he is in italics in verse 24, and also in verse 28. When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. That's also in italics. When John uses this word, I am, he doesn't mean I am the one, I am He. He, he, He's saying that Jesus is claiming essential equality with God. Uh, Unless you believe I am Unless you believe that I am. Unless you believe that I am God. Unless you believe that I am the divine uh, God in human flesh. If you will not confess that Jesus Christ is God, you will die in your sins. That's what Jesus is saying. What an amazing statement. No man ever spoke like this man. That he would declare himself to have essential equality with God. The Jews understood Jesus' words. As in John chapter 5, we saw earlier, I am working and my Father is working. The Jews fully understood, John 5, 17 and 18, that Jesus by that was claiming equality with God. He says, uh, I and the Father are one. John chapter 10, you being a man, make yourself out to be God, they said. They understood Jesus' words. And when he said, before Abraham was born, I am, they took up stones to kill him with because The penalty for blasphemy was death by stoning. They were saying Jesus was claiming to be God. No one in all the history of the world, military, political, financial, religious leaders, has ever claimed to be God. Not a God. Not a a kind of divine person or an ascended master or some kind of mumbo-jumbo. No, 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 no. Jesus is claiming to be God, the very creator and sustainer of the universe, equal with God the Father who sent him from heaven. No man ever spoke like this man. Finally, the Bible reports an occasion when Jesus claimed to forgive a sinner and set her free. Jesus Christ has authority to forgive sin. In their haste to accuse Jesus of ignoring the law of Moses, as the chapter begins, his critics brought an adulteress to him for judgment. Now notice how, though, although they say, caught in adultery in the very act, John 8, 3 and 4, the question for the reader is, where was the man? You see, because the law required the execution of both sinners. We go back in our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 10. The man, it says in the law, who commits adultery with another man's wife, he who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Leviticus 20 verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 22. 
<clears throat> Deuteronomy 22 and verse 22. If a man is found lying with a woman married to a husband, then both of them shall die, the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So you shall put away the evil from Israel. Here the religious leaders bring a woman caught in adultery in the very act. Well, if she was caught in adultery in the very act, the law which they were uh, you know, supposing to enforce here required that both the man and the woman be stoned to death, be executed for their fornication, for their adultery. Well, Jesus immediately, of course, saw this hypocrisy and he, re- he rightly ignored their unjust demands. The law furthermore called for innocent and truthful witnesses to carry out such executions. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 6 through 7, um, another uh, capital punishment is brought out here. And he says, Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death in the testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall not be put to death in the testimony of one witness. The hands of the witnesses shall be the first against him to put him to death. And afterward, the hands of all the people. So you shall put away the evil from among you. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 15 through 21. One witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter shall be established. If a false witness rises against any man to testify against him of wrongdoing, then both men in the controversy shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges who serve in those days. And the judges shall make careful inquiry, and indeed, if the witness is a false witness, who has testified falsely against his brother, then you shall do to him as he thought to have done to his brother, so you shall put away the evil from among you. And so, here we see again the hypocrisy of the religious leaders claiming to support, endorse, enforce the law of Moses, when in fact uh, utterly ignoring its implications, ignoring its standard. And so Jesus ignored their unjust demands, and he said, okay, guys, tell you what, uh, whoever is not deserving of this execution, uh, let him be the first to throw a stone. And so he called them to account. He called them to self-examination. The Bible says that beginning with the most experienced adulterers among them, they all walked away. Remember how Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 said, You have heard in the law that whoever commits adultery shall, you know, be put to death, shall be executed. You shall not commit adultery. You have heard in the law, the Bible says, you shall not commit adultery. But then he says, this is Matthew 5, 27 and 28. But I say to you that whoever lusts after a woman in his own heart has already committed adultery. Jesus' standard of righteousness as the law originally intended is much higher than simply actions, but deals also with the thoughts and motives and intents of the heart. And the scripture says that the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. Here was the word of Jesus Christ, judging the thoughts and intents of the human heart. Let him who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. And beginning with the most experienced sinner among them, they all left. Well, Here they were, the woman, now left alone before the incarnate holy God himself, who told her, I do not condemn you. Go and leave your life of sin. At that very moment, the condemned sinner no longer walked in darkness, for the light of the world had shined upon her. She would not die in her sins, for she knew the truth, and the very embodiment of truth himself had set her free from sin, both its power and its penalty. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says elsewhere. This is Jesus Christ, the I Am, who was sent by God. His light shines, and he is still setting sinners free today. 
No man. No man ever spoke like this man. And he still speaks to you and me today. For scripture memory, let me encourage you to hide away in your hearts the words of Jesus we read earlier in our study of John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32, where Jesus said, If you continue in my word, you are disciples of mine indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 31 through 32. Again, my name is Michael Chandler, and I'm pastor of the Victor Valley Bible Church, where we meet each Lord's Day, Sunday mornings at 1015 at 16439 Hughes Road in Victorville. I encourage you to join us. If you don't worship at a Bible teaching church, find one. And if you're in the area, stop by and worship with us. We'd be delighted to welcome you into our fellowship. For more information, please visit our website located at www.victorvalleybiblechurch.org. Or if you wish to email, my email address is bibletrom at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and may God bless you as you live out your Bible in your day.